Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the Medical Council of Canada's Qualifying Exam Part 1, or better known as MCCQE1. Now, in order to be eligible for a residency program in Canada, you have to complete two crucial exams. The first is the MCCQE1, and the other one is the NAC OSCE. Now, in this video, we'll talk specifically about the MCCQE1, and on the next video I release, I'll talk to you a bit more about the NAC OSCE. Now, you don't want to miss that video, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you'll be alerted when that video comes out. Now, let's get started talking about the MCCQE1. To get further details about this e exam, I would first recommend visiting the Medical Council of Canada's website and look under the MCCQE1 tab. Here you'll find details about the exam, how it's marked, passing scores, and other useful information. Now, to summarize, the MCCQE1 is an examination that assesses clinical medical knowledge of a candidate at the level of expected of a medical student who is about to complete medical school in Canada. I would compare this exam to be just a little bit more difficult than the USMLE Step 2 CK. The MCCQE1 is a one-day computer-based exam. The exam consists of two parts. The first part is a multiple choice question section, and the second part is a clinical decision-making section. The MCQ section is the first part where you're allowed up to four hours in the morning session to com complete 210 multiple choice questions. The clinical decision-making section starts after lunch in the afternoon, and here you're allowed up to three and a half hours to work through 38 cases. Each case description will be presented to you, followed by between one and four questions based on the actual case description. The answers that they require will be in the form of uh, short menu questions as well as short answer write-up questions that you fill in to the computer. So what is on this exam? Now the exam encompasses topics in medicine, surgery, obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics, psychiatry, and population health. To get an idea of exactly what's on this exam, visit the MCC website and click on the objective section. In prior years, there was a PDF document that was available to download and keep as a reference. Now, recently I went onto the website and I wasn't able to find this PDF document. The objectives are now listed in an interactive web page under the objectives menu. The exam aims to test clinical knowledge of medicine similar to the USMLE Step 2 CK. You won't be required to know any basic sciences unless, it, unless it's directly relevant to the practice of medicine in a clinic or hospital environment. So, for example, questions like how many ATP are produced from aerobic or anaerobic respiration won't directly be asked since this is really not a relevant question in clinical medicine. Now, before we go on to the strategies for preparing for this exam, if you're finding this video useful, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. Also, if you know anyone else who may find this video useful, don't forget to share it with them. Now, let's move on to how to prepare for the MCC QE1. The MCC QE1 is just one important pillar of your application for residency in Canada. Now, doing well on this exam is very, very important, and it'll enhance your application. It's very important to do as well as you can, because this exam can only be taken once if you pass it. Now, I was successful in being granted all my interviews for anesthesiology training in Canada, and eventually I matched into the training program at the University of Ottawa. My score on the MCCQE1 was in the 92nd percentile of ex all exam takers, even though I came from an engineering background before starting medical school. Now, the reason why I tell you this is not to gloat, but to show you that with some dedication and consistent work, you can also achieve a very high score. If you are serious about matching to a Canadian residency program, you need to start preparing for this exam early to ensure you do as well as you can. Now, preparing for this exam actually begins on day one of medical school. Take ownership of your learning and ensure that you learn the material in your lectures as well as you can. 
don't get don't ever get into the attitude of let me memorize this now for the exam and then eventually I learn it properly later. Learn it well the first time around. Now, don't get me wrong. Medical school will be filled with exams and the volume of material you'll be asked to learn is enormous. In some situations, you may need to memorize without really understanding in order to get through an exam, but don't get into the habit of making this a regular practice. It's very important in medical school to get into the attitude of figuring out why the topic is important for you to know. If you can answer this question every time, then your motivation for understanding the topic will be so much greater and you'll be able to take ownership of your learning. The length of time you would need to prepare for the MCC QE1 varies from individual to ind individual. Typically, I would recommend starting studying for this exam between six, and one, six months and one year before the exam date. Before you start, make a realistic schedule for yourself to keep you on track to complete all the topics before the exam date. As most of you will have other commitments such as medical school exams, clinical rotations, or work as a junior doctor in the country that you live in, I would recommend starting by studying for this exam several hours per week and then shifting into medium gear where you would be studying between two to three hours per day. And then finally, about six to eight weeks before the actual exam, I would recommend switching into high gear where you spend between four to six hours per day on weekdays and eight hours on weekends getting prepared for this exam. Again, this will depend on your level of comfort for the material and how well you manage your time. I would also recommend forming a study group if possible with other students who plan on writing this exam on the same date. This way, you can help each other remain accountable to achieve achieving certain milestones in your study schedule as you head closer to the big exam day. Now, let's talk about study resources I recommend you use. Try and narrow down your study re resources to a few high-yield sources. The following are what I would suggest. First, start with your medical school lecture notes. These are going to be vital. Your medical school lecture notes will already be familiar to you, and so reviewing this material is going to be a lot faster, and you'll know where to find certain topics. Your notes and highlights will also make sense to you as you revisit certain topics. Next, try and get a copy of a book called Toronto Notes. This book comes in a hard copy or a PDF version. This is like a dictionary of medical knowledge, and I probably wouldn't use this as a primary source to study. I, I would use this just as a reference to clarify any specific topics you may be unsure of while you go through your question banks and your medical school notes. There are two chapters specifically I would recommend reading from be beginning to end in the Toronto Notes. The first is called Ethical, Legal, and Organizational Medicine, which is very specific to Canada, and you probably won't find a better resource out there for this Canada-specific information. Canada has very different ethical frameworks for areas of medicine such as abortion and end-of-life care. So besides this being a very interesting topic, it's definitely worth a read for the exam. The other chapter that I would recommend reading in Toronto Notes is Public Health and Preventative Medicine. The principle of evidence-based medicine is very important in Canada, and this would be a very good chapter to read to get your head around different scientific study types and how to do simple calculations such as sensitivity and specificity of a test. Finally, you need to sign up to some online question banks. These question banks are what you should base the majority of your study around. The two online question banks I would recommend are Canada QBank and UWorld. Canada QBank is a exam bank that is specifically geared towards the Canadian examinations. You can sign up for membership lasting between 30 days and one year. The price does not the price does seem high, but with such a high stakes exam, I would definitely consider consider it as a good investment. Also, you could maybe share the membership with a couple of your friends. UWorld has question banks mostly for the American licensing exam. I would recommend signing up to the USMLE Step 2 CK question bank as a supplemental resource as well. 
So this is essentially all you need to prepare for the MCC QE1. I would avoid bogging yourself down with too many textbooks or resources, which could overwhelm you. If you have a specific textbook for general medicine and surgery that you really love, then by all means, I would recommend using it. But in reality, I would probably stick to the resources that I've mentioned above. Finally, about two weeks before the actual exam, go to the MCC website and buy a practice exam. These exams are quite pricey and essentially are a big money grab by the MCC, but I would recommend buying a practice exam to familiarize yourself with the actual exam. So that's pretty much it. If you need some tips on improving your study techniques and increasing your efficiency, then I would suggest watching my four-part series titled Study Like a Doctor. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you keep an eye out for my next video coming out soon about the NACOSCI. Happy studying and I'll see you on the next one.